Hi, I'm Sheila Cunningham, and I'm an artist. And some of the medias that I work in, I do photography, I do printmaking, I do uh, mixed media, I make books, um, really anything this kind of fun collage. Art is so much fun. So today I'm going to be showing you some carving, and it it's going to go with the project I'm working on, and this is going to be made into a little book. And then I'm going to show you some of the things that you can use at home that you don't have to have any kind of fancy tools for. And then I'm going to show you how to put together a um, side-bound journal and some of the things that you could put into your journal. So today I'm going to be showing you some different ways for um, carving. And I'm going to show you first my project. And then we're going to talk about some journals that you could make. So my project started out with nobody could find toilet paper. So I decided that I needed to have a toilet paper thing. And then I thought, well, I need to tell a story with this. So then I decided that who would want toilet paper in your house besides you? Well, if you have a kitty, this kitty with his little nails, he wants that toilet paper. So the first one I drew, and then I decided that I better carve these. So I have another one that I did that I just traced this cat, and here's the solid. And then here will be the outline that will go around it. So I just would stamp this one and then stamp this on top for the outline. So then I did the same with the dog because now we have to have masks. And the dog, here's the solid for the dog. So I would just stamp it like that. And then I would come along here with my outline and line that up and stamp it here. Then on this one, I just kept these two in a block instead of uh, trimming them close. And so for the person, I just stamped the color and then I stamped the outline. Because then everybody was at home so long, everybody wanted little dogs. So then they have the dogs. So my next idea in here is going to be uh, the people leaving and the little dogs so sad. So when I was making these, what I did was I did my outline, because I, I had drawn this first, so I just traced around this, <clears throat> and then I had transferred this onto my block, and then I carved it. The other thing I could do is I could just draw right on my block. So my block looks like this. It's just a plain pink eraser-like material, and this is the speed ball that you can find at most craft stores. And uh, let's get some of this out of the way for now. And then the things I'll be using to carve will be, I have two different points and I don't have to have different handles for them, but it's easier when I'm carving that I can just pick up one and pick up the other. But if you buy a set, usually they come with Inside the handle, they have the different um, cutting tops. And they all do something different. So this one is a narrow V. This one is a little, this might be the same one. This is a um, narrower but deeper. And this one is a little bit wider, but a little bit bigger than this one. And this one is just the knife, and then this one is the big, uh, is a bigger gouge, so you can get do larger spaces. And then you can just save these right in this handle, and then you can just um, switch them out. But if you're going to be using this one, then this one, then this one, then it's easier if you have two handles. So my idea for this one is here's the little dog he's at all at home, and then. I'm going to have the person running off to work with his little briefcase. Her, she, her or she, she or he or she. Oh, briefcase. <laughs> so the person is running off to work with their briefcase. And so I've already drawn this on here, and I drew this on this little post-it note so that it would fit into my um, little scallop piece of paper I have. And that's what I, I did for all these. So, and I cut this so this would be the exact same size. And it was very easy to cut with an X-Acto knife. So I could either use the, tr the tracing paper, but since I knew I wanted to fit this size, so I'm just gonna turn this over. 
and I just drew on that with pencil and I'm just going to take my nail and I'm just going to rub the back of it and you can see how it's already transferring and then I'm going to check okay so that looks pretty good so this is going to be what I'm going to carve so um, I'm going to start out with the fine gauge and I'm just going to pick a thing. Now what I want to do is I want to carve it very shallowly, shallow, shallowly. And that means I'm going to be more of at an angle like this than an angle like this. Because I want this just to scoop up the material. I don't want this top to get buried in the material. So I'm just going to start at this intersection here. And I'm just going to go along. And then if I want to turn a corner, I'm just going to turn my block. And then I might want to make this a little bit deeper. But remember, you want to be careful not to bury the tip of your cutting instrument. So then I'll just keep cutting around. And then, for instance, if I want to make sure that I really hit this um, 90 degree angle that I can, because I've got up to here and I can just come in here and I just do this one. And I just try to, to get rid of the little remains so I can see what's going on. And then one of the things I have to think about is, so I've done this, do I want to keep this an outline, so it kind of goes with the stick figure outline, or do I want to uh, make this solid? So I think I'll leave this for very last so I can make that decision. And then I'm gonna come up here. You can see how this collects. It's not as, pro as much problem on the other grooves, but this is a very narrow one. Uh, these just kind of want to stay in there. And then I can't really see what's going on the next time I carve. So the other thing that I sometimes do is I will pick the trickiest area. Now I'm just kind of going around this figure but I might carve the trickiest area first, so if I make a mistake, then I haven't wasted my time carving everything else, and then I made a big mistake and I can't recover from that. If I were to make a mistake, then I could come back and try to reconfigure. So this is gonna be my, kind of my little trickiest area. So I've got the hand, I'm trying to hold that handle. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and finish going around him. Or her. Person. And this is kind of a sharp angle, so I want to make sure it's a sharp angle. So I'm coming in here and I can already see that I went a little bit past that line. So I'm just going to have to pick up and make the leg maybe a little bit lower than I had intended. So now I'll come back to here. Let me start here. And I can see that this is a little bit lower. So I'm going to come a little lower here. And let me finish around this leg. Okay, I think I have all around. Oh, let me go ahead and outline the face so we can see that. Because then I'm going to do a little chest print. So I have all my little shreds off of there, except for here at the mouth, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and test this now to make sure that it, um, that I've kind of started where I wanted to. Usually I won't test print until I do a lot more of this. So 
So one of the things I like to do is I like to make sure that I have, when I use an ink pad, that I have a raised ink pad so that it's easier to get at the stamp. And this is small enough that I could go like this, but then my fingers might get all inky. So the easiest way is just to turn this over and just to apply it. And then I wanna make sure I get even coverage. And since this is a new block, then it might not have quite even coverage. So I wanna make sure I have good coverage. And I'm using a lighter color first to do my testing so that I can still see my dark lines. So you can still see my dark line. So if I, when I come back to finish my carving, I can see what's going on and I haven't covered it up with the black ink. <clears throat> and I can see all of that. So I'm going to, and then if my pieces were a little bit bigger, even bigger than this, I could use a brayer and some ink, but this, the, but the ink pads are really easy to use. So I'm just going to stamp that. And I wanna make sure that I, I do some even stamping even pressure. Just gonna let it release. And so you can see my face in here, it looks a little weird. So I can come back in here and I can see what areas I need to do. I wanna have the body be a little slimmer. I can come back in here and trim that up a little bit. Uh, of course, I need to finish the face and I don't have the eyeball in here. Um, so I can make these decisions now that I've done the basic part. So, and I can just keep on carving. But what if you don't have all these fabulous things right at home and you just really are wanting to get busy and do it? <clears throat> so the other things you could do that you might have at home <clears throat> is a takeout container. So on these, I just cut out the bottoms of all those pieces. So I could use these little styrofoam um, pieces of your to-go carton. If you have foam sheets, you could do the foam sheets, and I'll show you how to do those in a second. If you have erasers, you could use an eraser because I just use the eraser material, and you could use your carving tool with the eraser. But with, with these, the foam sheets, I have a thicker one so that when I'm done drawing on this one, then I can take off, and I've got a self-adhesive, so I can take this off and just stick it right onto to here. So this gives me a little bit bigger thing to put my fingers around. So if I wanted to draw on this, I can just take any pen, pencil, and it doesn't matter if it marks or not, because what you're going to do is you're going to carve in or draw in the, the lines. And so what will happen is the lines will go down and then everything that's left, and so they won't print. Everything that's left here on the top will print. So for instance, here is how these printed, so you can see this is this one. So this goes with this design. And this is, uh, this design is both places. Uh, and then this one is right here. So I can just draw in here. Oh, and I did an initial, so here's my SC. But here's the tricky thing with letters is you have to make sure they're reversed. So that when you, when I stamp this, then allegedly it will come back out SC. So if you do any kind of writing, you need to make sure that is backwards. So I'm just gonna do some sort of a design and I'm just gonna do just some circles, maybe some lines. And if I was using an old pen, <clears throat> and it doesn't matter if it works or not. Because I'm not really caring if it leaves a mark, all I'm caring that it leaves a dent in the foam. So let's try that one. And this is going to be a little trickier because I don't have it on a handle yet. But I'm still going to try and do this upside down. And I'm going to kind of smear it a little bit. Maybe get some coverage so that when I do stamp. 
And if you're gonna do a lot of these smaller ones, you might want a smaller ink pad if you happen to have those. Whatever kind of ink pad you have would be okay. So you can see where the red will print and everything, the, the pencil and the uh, other line will not print. Again, I wanna make sure I do even coverage. I'm just gonna get that kind of release. So I have that kind of a design. And these are very easy. And then once you're done and you like it, uh, be sure and wash it off. And then I can just adhere this to this and then, then this will give me the, the little handle to make it easier. The other thing I can do is if I have bottle caps, which of course we're all recycling. So you have bottle caps and you have shapes. You can cut your own shapes also. And you can put those uh, on the bottle cap, and that gives you a really nice handy um, handle then to do the stamping with. And this one, I can just tap it myself, and I want to just double check and make sure that I have good coverage. And then just press it down and release it. And then I could put these together, and I just have to look and see, okay, so I have my, to match those two together. So I can make a whole design just using the different shapes. Okay. So, we had all these fun things, but we need to do something with them. So I'm just gonna move this stuff all out of the way. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make a journal that is a side bound journal. So it will look end up looking like this. So you could use a stick, you could use a pen. This is a great thing to use with um, pens that don't have any ink left in them. And all you need is you need some paper for covers. So I've got some here. So I've got my um, cover front and back. And if you have paper, uh, that'd be good. If you have some sort of interesting catalog, or um, magazine or something that has an interesting cover. You can certainly cut that out or you can cut that out and glue it onto here. And then I have my pages inside and then I've got a paper clip to kind of hold everything together so I can see through these holes. So before we put this together, let's talk about cutting the holes. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that they are like at least a uh, half an inch-ish from the side so I don't get too close to the edge that would rip it. And so basically I either kind of, I can measure it or I can, with a ruler or I can just with my finger just kind of eyeball it from the top about an inch in. So I figure an inch in and that's two of my fingers. So I cut these and now I can do one of two things. I can either use this for the template and you can sometimes, if you're careful, you cut a couple pages at a time. Don't try to cut too many. And I can line these up, and then I can get my punch. And remember, this is the part that does the punching. So you want your paper to go in here between the little L bracket and the bottom. And I'm just going to look and see where that punch is. And I'm going to try to line that up the best I can with that hole and punch it. And that's super easy. But sometimes if your paper's too thick, you might not want to do that. So the other way to do that is I could line this up on my paper. Let me just get a few sheets here. And I use this for the template and I just trace around here. Then I want to take this off come along here, make sure that my punch is on that circle. I, I, it would, and that you punch all the way through. And if you don't, come back and take these little ends off so that your hole be clear so you can see through it. <clears throat> so then you're gonna do that for all your sheets. <clears throat> and you can have however many sheets you want in there. Now one thing is sometimes if your holes aren't exactly even and you put these together 
and maybe the hole is um, a little off. And you can see that you, you can see I can't quite see through these. Do I need to, did I get my pages mixed up? And do I need to flip this around and will that match better? So try to keep them aligned the way you punch them, but if that doesn't happen, then you can switch that around. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is once you have that done, then you're going to line this up, make sure you can see through this. Sometimes to get them all lined up, you might need to take your pencil and just kind of make sure that everything is lined up. And of course, remember that your spine is on your left-hand side, on your left-hand side. So all we need is we need a rubber band. Oh, I do a red one. And I have two pencils here. I think I'll do the red that will stick out. So I'm just going to start through one of the holes. And if I can't get that through the hole, I can just take the uh, pencil and kind of help push it through. And I don't need to push it through very much. And then I'm going to put the stick or the um, any straight object, really. I'll put this through. And then I'll come down to this end. I'll have to stretch this. You might need help with this because sometimes it takes more than your two hands. You might need four hands. And I'll stick this through. And you can see how easy this is. <laughs> okay, get help. Um, okay, so I have it coming through here. And be sure that you use a large um, rubber band and don't get one that's too small because you see the problem I'm already having with this, with this rubber band. And this is a great size. Okay, so I'm just gonna push this down. And I have my mark from my pencil. I wonder if I can erase that. I'll hide it underneath the uh, clip. Okay, so here is my spine has been attached. And now I can open my pages and do some different things inside. So some of the things we can do inside we already talked about printing, so I could print some different things in here. Let's see if I have any, um, this has any ink left on it. No, it doesn't, okay. Let me add some ink. So I needed better, better coverage here, but you get the idea. So, and I could leave it like this. I could stamp some other things around here. Uh, I could write a story. Why is this person running? Why is he running with this case? What is going on? So I could write my whole story here. If you have some of the phone shapes that you didn't use for, uh, for a stamp, here's a giraffe. And I did a very quick little drawing. Where does this giraffe live? And what's going on with that? So then I have all these other pages that I could do things with. So one of the other fun things you can do is work with the visual alphabet. So there's a guy, uh, Dave Gray, and he does a lot of things with businesses, and he talks a lot about doodling for businesses. And he made this little scale. And when you think about it, everything you draw can be made with these shapes. So, if I'm doing a face, then I'll put my pen out. So my face is just, um, so you can say I'm just starting with, with the oval or a circle. And the eyes would be the eye shape. Or you could consider that two arcs. And the nose could be an arc. And then I could add little nostrils, which would be the point or a dot. 
and the mouth could just be an upside down arc. And then for the hair, I could do like a cloud shape. I could also do loops or spirals. So here I did kind of both. So the bangs are like little loops. And maybe the hair's really curly, so I'll do some little spirals. And then if I want to add a neck, just two lines. So you see how this is so super easy. The other thing, this is super, super easy, donuts, and they're super easy to eat. Uh, just two circles, inside and outside circle. And then I can add little dots for decoration, and because you know all the sprinkles. A coffee cup. So a coffee cup is just two lines, and then an arc. And I need one going down into the cup and one above the cup. And then I'm going to have some sort of liquid. Well, what goes with donuts? Well, I think I'm going to have some hot chocolate. So I will just draw a little arc here. And then I'm just going to draw this in. And color in. So here's my hot chocolate. And then I'm going to have a saucer, which is kind of a combination between some arcs on the two sides. Or you can sit, consider it. The oval that I started here, but I didn't go all the way through the cup. So I'm going to start the oval and then I'm just going to pretend like it goes behind here. And remember, I'm drawing upside down. So, so on my, for my handle, I'm just going to do two arcs the bigger arc and then the inside arc. Oh, I need a, I've forgotten something. So I need an arc from the bottom of my cup. So just using those simple, simple shapes. You don't have to worry about you can't draw. Okay, you can use simple shapes and anything that you could draw is made out of these kinds of shapes. So that would be a very fun thing to add into for one of the pages of your book. Then the other thing that, that, that uh, Dave Gray talks about, and he, he, he has books that you guys could check out. So um, he talks about these drawing people and they filled in like the feet and the hands and the head and you know a body shape so that you can kind of see them. And what he likes to do is he likes to do this visual journaling. So when you're drawing the people, then you have um, different motions. Are they running? Are they standing? Which way are they running? Uh, how would your arms and legs move? So if you're throwing the spear, then you have your hand up. How does that, that arm, this one bends back? Usually the one in front is going straight. Are your legs bent? Are they bent as much as if you're running, like these people running? How, what is happening with your body and your, your uh, motions with your body? So here I have a little diary-like. So here's kind of my person running. And so here's like when I came here today, I got in my car, I brought my bag of supplies in, I'm sitting at the table and they're filming it on the phone. <clears throat> when I leave, I'll get my bags of stuff, go back to the car, I might go to the grocery store, and then I'm going to get some fruits and vegetables. So this could be like a diary of what I did today. And so that also could be one of the pages in my book. Uh, and I could draw that in my book. You see here, if I was gonna actually put this in my book, I'd need to make sure that this was further over here so I'd have room for my holes. So those are the different things that you could put in your journal. But your journal is your journal. So whatever you wanna put into it, you can put into it. If you wanna write a story, a poem, just drawing, just sketching, that would be up to you. So thank you very much and I hope you have fun creating everything that um, we've shown you here. Thank you.